Technology and entrepreneurship have really gone far in creating impressive ideas and new cultures in virtually every aspect of people's lives. Agricultural entrepreneurs and experts believe farmers can still cultivate crops without using soil throughout their farming activities by using numerous farming technologies such as hydroponic farming systems. Hydroponics is derived from two Greek words, hydros meaning water and ponos meaning work. Hydroponic is a system that uh, does not use uh, soil as a media, as a material for planting. The hydroponic uh, that we are talking about when we are talking about production of lettuce is that we are growing the lettuce on top of water. In the advanced agriculture of today, we don't need a large area to produce a high uh, yielding uh, <coughs> crops. And actually we are, we are free of disease and insects. This is why we are using the hydroponic inside the greenhouse. Soilless production, it's, it's against the norm because people expect crops to be planted in soil. But um, soilless production of crops kind of helps in improving your precision and knowing exactly what you're getting. This is the dosing, dosing machines that uh, did when we mix the fertilizer in, the, in this big bucket. Then from here, we are sending the water and the fertilizer down to the greenhouses. We have almost, lot, almost we have full control on the water and we have full control on the fertilizer application. We know exactly how much, how much fertilizer we are applying. Uh, we know the dosing that's on each, 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 uh, each crops. When it comes to soilless farming, the fundamental thing in growing plants are the biotic and the abiotic factors. So we have things like you need light, you need nutrients, you need air. All of these guys come together to ensure that the plant can grow. So whether I am providing these nutrients with soil as the additive that is holding the nutrients together, or the nutrient is inside water, or the nutrient is in the air, the plant does not really care. What matters to the plant is I have access to nutrients. And once there is nutrient, the plant will grow. So in soilless farming, it is all simply changing the medium that serves to hold water for the plant, the medium that serves to anchor the roots of the plant, the medium that allows erosion for the roots of the plant. That is all we are doing. So we are removing soil and replacing with any other non-soil material. The average African farm performs at only about 40% of its potential. And on present trends, the continent will only produce 13% of its food needs by 2050. Going by this trend to boost Africa's production capacity, it is imperative that the continent begins to look at alternative innovative approaches to farming. Some of the products and the vegetables, the fresh vegetables we have now, about six, seven years ago, they were at astronomical prices in the supermarkets. And I don't think you can really call them fresh because before you pack them, harvest, harvest them, fly them into Nigeria, clear cost and put it on the shelf. But there are a lot of farms now doing soilless farming. And you can have it on the shelf the same day it's harvested. So people are already going into it. And um, it's, it's still growing. There's still room for people to, to come in. But I think we're already going towards that direction. We need to understand the principle. It's not about copying what is being done, but understand the principle. Have an awareness of your environment so that by understanding the principle, having an awareness of your environment, you can now domesticate the process. Because if you want people to adopt it, the process must be such that people around understand it. They can relate with it in their own language. Reverend Cohen, an Israeli who has been in the business of setting up soilless farming facilities in the country, is of the opinion that Africa has a lot of potentials in the agricultural sector. In Africa, you can produce any crops that you want. Even in Nigeria, if I would take you from the down south to the tropical area, to the middle belt, 
to Mambila Plateau, to the Sub-Sahara, there is no crops in the world that you cannot produce in Nigeria. The opportunity, the opportunity here in Africa is more than any continent that I know. Let me tell you, I'm coming from Israel. The first time I saw pineapple is when I came to Nigeria. And the first time I saw papaya, it was in Nigeria here. We don't have it in it. We have our own temperate crops, but I never saw it. In Africa, you have every crops that you need, that you can produce in the world, you can produce it here. In the hydroponic, first of all, it doesn't need so much land. If I will have to, pro to produce 81,000 lettuce on the ground, it will be a lot of hectares. Here, I can do it in 400 square meters. So, the difference is very, very much in a matter of maintaining, a matter of costing of production, because I need, I don't know, I didn't calculate it before, but if I need to produce 81,000 head of lettuce in a year, I'd certainly need a few hectares of land to do it. We want to close that gap between the farms and the city where we want to sell our produce. And in closing that gap, hydroponics gives us the chance to do that because we also need to remember that when civilization gets to a place, the cost of land becomes astronomically high. So whatever I want to do in the land in the city must be profitable enough to compete favorably with the environment. So I cannot have the normal conventional farming in the middle of Lekki. Even if those in Lekki, the, the people in Lekki do not complain, you realize that I will not make enough to be able to sustain a farm in Lekki, but hydroponics gives us that. You can predict your yield. It becomes a bit more precise. You can design your farm to work like a factory. Like if you have a hydroponics, you can get someone that says I want 20 kg of lettuces every week. You can then plant that in your hydroponics and you get almost to the T what you planted. The yield, the number of heads. But if you plant outside, a lot of elements and a lot of factors can make you not get what you actually expect. And you can also do the timing. Uh, in a hydroponics, for example, you can be precise. You can even say, okay, every week we're harvesting X, Y, Z. You plant towards that and you minimize all the external factors that can make you get something else. A promising transformation has already started in Africa's farmland. Farmers are increasingly using innovative approaches and scientific research combined with traditional knowledge to increase the productivity of their fields, diversify their crops, boost their nutrition and build climate resilience. They have production all year round. You cannot produce tomato in the rainy season. Why you cannot produce a tomato in the rainy season? Because in the time of the rain, the rain is washing the pollination powder and then you cannot get any fruits. You know, down south, you're getting all the fruits from the south, from the north, because there is no much rain there. In the down south, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot get it. So when you have a greenhouse, this protected area, you can produce any crops all year round. It doesn't matter if, you see there is rain now, it doesn't bother me. If they will have tomato outside, I will not get, I almost get nothing out of it. So it's give us the option to produce all year round. If you're doing farm commercially, not, um, not subsistence, you're dealing with people that, for example, if you take a contract from a restaurant, a restaurant don't want to put something on the menu and when clients come, they say, ah, oh, sorry, we couldn't give you this, your salad because Blade Farms didn't fulfill their order. That's an excuse a restaurant is going to give. So, so, so that you can have consistency, your suppliers can rely on you, then it's good, it's better. It's actually the best way of production I know, soilless. Hydroponic systems offer amazing opportunities for African farmers, a lucrative means to make a living. Whereas the traditional model of farming that is based on soil offered so many disadvantages. The hydroponic system is proven to provide incredible benefits to many people in Africa. Such an opportunity should be seized. There is a lot of a lot of opportunities here in Africa. In, I, I work in Nigeria for the last 38 years, and there is a lot of there is a lot of things that can be done in Nigeria. The only thing I think we need is a is a is a bit of luck and a bit of good intention towards the the the, the country, and then I think uh, Nigeria can be one of the major 
major supply of food stuff or vegetable foods to any place in the world. You see, we have a window from the, same, the Hamatan time in the north that in, in Europe is winter time. They don't produce, they don't produce anything. This uh, window between November to February, we can send a lot of fresh vegetables to Europe or to any other place in the world. There is mango, there is avocado, there is so many crops that is very high demand in Europe that we can grow it here.